Welcome to Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom podcast. My name is Mumpulu Kiluruma Mohobe. Our objective is to enthuse, inspire, energize, and empower entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs of all stripes here in BW and beyond. We do so by inviting these entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs into our makeshift studio. Sometimes we call them to the restaurant, sometimes we go uh, to our studio and we ask them to share their experiential knowledge, their experiences and their expertise. And we ask them uh, as many questions as we can aimed at empowering you also as a viewer. Hello dear viewer, dear listener. Uh, my name is Mompulu Giluruma Mohobe, your host of this wonderful podcast, Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom. Um, as usual, we bring dynamic, uh, exciting guests for your benefit. And this time around, we have a medical doctor, and we're going to talk about the ins and outs of uh, medical entrepreneurship. We're going to talk basically about the overarching subject of uh, work-life harmony or work-life balance. Uh, welcome to the studio, uh, Ms. Uh, Dr. Serrero. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Mokobe. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I have to introduce myself. Yes, okay. I'm going to ask you to just share your background okay. and introduce yourself in full. Okay, so I am Dr. Precious Serrero. Mm -hmm. I'm a general practitioner. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm currently just about to finish my postgrad um, studies in sports medicine, mm -hmm. one of my areas of interest. I also have a special interest in what we call aesthetic medicine which has everything to do with um, restoring and just bringing the beauty, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but using non-surgical procedures. So that's just the difference between aesthetic medicine and cosmetic surgery. Okay. Yeah. You mentioned I, uh, oh, okay. sports medicine. Is it similar to what uh, Dr. Lesedinyana Odiseng is doing? Yes, yes. Okay. Actually, he's one of the people that I work very closely with just to learn from him because he's been in the industry a bit longer than yes. myself. Yeah. Okay. So I run a medical practice um, clinic. It's called Pemo Clinic. It's based here in the CBD at Central Square. And what we offer there is clinical medicine, uh, which is consultations, um, family planning. And then we also have another wing of the business, which is wellness. Mm -hmm. So the wellness part of the business is more to do with corporate um, or organization, like well, employee wellness um, mm -hmm. programs that we do mm -hmm. for, yeah, for organizations. Okay. Um, you, you, one of the important things you mentioned to me when we were prepping is that you really need a support structure. Could you just help the listener understand your existing support structure and why you believe that is important? Yeah, you know, <laughs> entrepreneurship is hard on its own. Mm. And I don't think it's a journey that you want to do on your own. And I really believe for anyone to really make it, you need people around you that can lift you up, that can support you. And it, it could be a family, it could be friends, it could be people that you meet as you go along in life. I think for me, um, one of the people that I'll just mention, my pastors are some of the greatest leaders that I really have in my life. Mm. I remember the one conversation I had with my pastor, Pastor JJ, that really just got this ball Pastor rolling. JJ. Yes, Pastor, Pastor JJ. Um, Pastor JJ van Royen. Oh, okay. okay. Yes. And when we had the conversation, he said to me, Precious, at the time I was still working for another private clinic, and he said, Precious, when are you going to open your own clinic? And at the time, it was such a foreign concept to me. I mean, I knew at some point mm. I might, mm. you know, but it just got me thinking. And over time, they have been very supportive, my family, my friends. I mm. mean, even when we opened the clinic, I had friends that come and say, Precious, let me give you a switchboard phone mm. so that you can use Precious. You can use my internet for a month or so while you're still setting up. And I think really those are the kind of people that you want around you that mm. can prepare propel you towards fulfilling the dream um, and the vision that you have for your life. Yeah. Mm. So you, you, you developed a network Yes, yourself. basically, yes. Okay. In terms of um, employees and partners, who, who do you have with you now? Um, as far as partnership goes, mm. um, I'm currently the only general practitioner at the practice. Mm. And I have other doctors that work with me as and when I'm not available. Like, as, as I mentioned earlier, if I have like school commitments and as I'm here, mm. yes. <laughs> they are the ones covering me. Mm. And then I have um, the, the really the core of the team 
which is our admin lady, mm. our front desk and the lady like housekeeping. Mm. And I think that brings us to our second point. And which is to say, stay focused, be clear about what you're going. Exactly. Um, uh, can you speak to that idea and, and apply it to your, actual, your life? To my life, mm. you know. <laughs> your work life as well. Yes. Mm. Uh, um, I think in this age of social media, there's just, every day there's almost something trending. Mm -hmm. There's almost something that is hitting the market and we all want to jump on that bandwagon. But mm -hmm. a very important um, concept I really learned, principle, is you have to be very focused. Mm. And I remember um, having conversations with some of my friends and they would call me stubborn, mm -hmm. you know. And I was like, you know, usually when the word stubborn is used, it's used as a negative. You know, but in, I, I, I literally just took the decision to turn it into a positive. Like, mm. I'm stubborn, yes, mm. but I'm going to be very stubborn about my goals. I'm going to be very stubborn about where I'm going in life. And that is where I think the focus mm. comes in. It can be positive. You it can be positive, yes. It's persistence. Exactly. Mm. So it's, it's persistence. It's being very unrelenting about your goals and mm. knowing. Because there'll, there'll always be something that looks a lot more attractive than what you're doing. But you mm. have to remember, stay focused too the plan on the paper and it's not to say that you you just like blindside yourself to all the other opportunities that present themselves to some extent you have to i suppose you can put it that way mm. but as long as they support where you're going mm -hmm. what you want to build then definitely okay and you talk in that context about sticking to your lane can you give ex instances where you've been tempted to get off your lane and what did you do to stay on your lane <laughs> So like I said, um, I'm, I'm, a very, I'm very passionate about wellness. And this started when I, was, I had just started my um, profession as an intern. I was working in hospital. And I remember at the time thinking, yeah, we work so hard. Mm. I mean, we've got like 30 hour long days with no wink of sleep. And mm. the bathroom break that you get or a lunch break that you get, it's literally forced. Mm. Your lunch break could literally be like a bar mm. of breakfast snack mm. or something. Yeah. And I remember thinking at that point, like, we work so hard as employees, mm. you know, as staff. Mm. But who takes care of the staff? Who takes mm. care of the caregiver? Mm. And that's where my passion and my love for wellness came in. Mm. And having to bring it now to me being in business of wellness and all of that. Mm. I mean, if you look at the wellness industry, it is so vast. You know, when we talk about wellness, a lot of us, uh, for the longest time, have always known it um, as a one-dimensional concept. But it's actually a lot broader than that. So there's the physical wellness, there's emotional wellness, there's spiritual wellness, there's occupational wellness, environmental wellness, financial wellness, mm. all of these things. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, wellness, yes. You know, so we're together, when you bring it together, this is how you get a fully functional, if I can say that, mm. um, individual. Mm. So in the wellness space, you have to find, I had to be intentional mm. about knowing that this is where I want to work in. Mm. I don't know a lot about financial concepts and principles and stuff, mm. but what I can do to also make sure that I stay within my lane, mm. I can rope in someone who is very well versed in that um, area and get them to be part of the team or support us in that um, instance. I can mm. get someone who's a better, Mm. Um, who's got a better understanding of environmental wellness and how human beings and the environment mm. interact. Mm. So that's really, I think, one of the ways that I have been very intentional to say, don't veer off mm -hmm. um, the path that you're on. What yeah. you could do if you need something, make sure you get people that can complement the services that you offer so that you have a nice full package. Mm. Yeah. So that when it comes to you, then what, what is the emphasis in terms of your wellness? And how is it different from normal medicine where people are just, you come in, yeah. you check your temperature, they prescribe <laughs> pills. Check it's your almost, BP. Yeah, yeah. And then you repeat. It's almost like, um, you know, a conveyor belt med medicine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> conveyor uh, belt. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really wanting to understand your wellness specialization. Where is it focused and how is it different? Okay. There really isn't much of a difference between... I'll call it mainstream medicine, mm -hmm. okay? Because like I said, I still practice clinical medicine. It's still part of it. So if you look at medicine, we have what we call preventive medicine and curative medicine, okay? And for the longest time, we've been focused on curative medicine, which is to say, okay, Precious, you've got high blood pressure. 
mm. let us try and work on that or let us try and work on that mm. you know but when we now talk about preventive medicine we are saying okay you are a young healthy man and you don't have bp you don't have sugar diabetes you don't have one two three and four now the aim of preventive medicine is to keep you there mm -hmm. if you have high blood pressure the aim then is that it does not get worse mm -hmm. or we delay the process the progression of the disease so really that and if you look now globally where we're moving in terms of medicine that is the area we're moving into mm -hmm. to be proactive instead okay. of being reactive and curative is more reactive than proactive okay. and that's where really we also just want to get to sensitize even corporates um mm -hmm. corporations to so say you want to focus on preventative medicine preventative medicine mm -hmm. in the long run i mean we all know that prevention is better than cure yes you know so yeah. it, it is in the true sense like okay. that yeah let me ask you a little bit about the team um you know you say it's important to have a team which buys into your vision how do you go about doing that and to what extent have you been successful in that regard <laughs> i think first and foremost i myself the leader mm. have to be convicted I have to have a clear conviction about this vision that I am about. Mm -hmm. I have to know where I want to go, when I want to get there, how I want to get there. And then from there, my conviction, sometimes, you, you know, you don't, as I think it's like if you've had a conversation with someone who's passionate about something, sometimes they don't have to say a lot. The moment they open their mouth and start talking, you can tell, you, this is passion. I want to know some more, mm -hmm. you know, and it's the same thing with someone who has vision, mm -hmm. who knows where they're going. This, the moment they start talking, you're like, I want what she's talking mm -hmm. about. And I think for me, um, with, with, with PEMO Clinic and my team, mm -hmm. it has been that it, just from day one to say, okay, guys, this is what we are building. Mm -hmm. This is the big picture. Yes, we are starting here mm -hmm. with one clinic in the CBD with three consulting rooms, and it's just the five of us in the team. But ultimately, this is where we want to to get so i want you as part of this team to sort to fit yourself somewhere into this picture mm -hmm. and when you do that you create a long-term type of um, mentality that mm -hmm. your team also has they look forward to five mm -hmm. years down the line so even as they work today mm -hmm. they know this is what we are working towards i'm like you're probably going to head um another branch of PEMO, maybe in francis town or in windhook or mm -hmm. something like that yeah. you know when you when you in get that ingrained in the people they so start paint to paint a picture right from the beginning from the start mm -hmm. i mean we're only a year <laughs> into this <Yeah. laughs> and i can confidently say i think we are both we are all on the same page about mm -hmm. where we're going as okay. um the PEMO team yeah you say you must uh, also uh, the other thing that we need to talk about is getting a personality for your the right personality for your needs and that there should be no room for shyness um aren't there people who are naturally introverted and shy <laughs> and actually, how do you overcome that <laughs> mm. i'm actually naturally introverted mm. i i like my space i keep to myself mm. you know social gatherings and interactions are like i have to psych myself up and prepare myself to say okay i'm going to go to this place you know um mm -hmm. things like that i mean even just having to strike a conversation with someone i have to work on it mm -hmm. and i i remember the one time i said with myself i'm like you know girl this stripe business is not going to cut it mm -hmm. if you're going to do this thing mm -hmm. and it's not say you're not being true to yourself um it's just learning what your craft is going to need mm -hmm. for you to make it yes. um and, and 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 a lot of it also comes with how we condition our mind because for a long time i've said to myself i'm shy i cannot be in front of the camera mm -hmm. i'm shy i can't mm -hmm. go to that place uh, here you um, are today. <laughs> look at me today mm -hmm. and um i i really had to sit down and be like Precious, you have to say the opposite of shy, which is what you will need to do this interview. Mm. So I am confident, mm. I am resilient, I am a good interviewee, mm. and, 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 but... Um, and I agree with all of that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so do, do, do people who are shy or who are introverted have to undergo a personality change of sorts? I wouldn't say a personality change, but it's just to try and cultivate certain traits mm -hmm. um, that you will need for um, the business. I'll give you an example. I attended a, a book launch not so long ago, 
and a friend of mine was really pushing me to go. <clears throat> so he said to me, when you get there, you have to come back with at least two contacts. You have to network. You have to go and talk to people mm. that you don't know. Mm. <laughs> so I remember when I said, I'm like, so I fortunately, when I got there, I met a friend of mine, mm. um, someone that I knew there. So I said to them, listen, I need to speak to that lady because I want to connect with her. Mm. Please help me with a small talk. Like, how do I start? Mm. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> and it was so simple. Thankfully, mm. they, they, they started the conversation. They just greeted the lady. So I was like, yes, hello. Mm. I'm also, I'm precious. And mm. this is what I do. Mm. And really, it also takes a lot of practice. Mm. You know, you can't just do it once and hope that you'll be good at it. You mm. have to put yourself in places that really make you uncomfortable mm. and that make you like the things you're so fearful of. It's the things that you have to yeah. do them afraid, okay. you know. And you, you, there's also the importance of being committed to your vision mm -hmm. that keeps creeping in. Mm -hmm. And uh, can you tie the two together? Does the vision drive you to overcome the shyness, the hesitancy, the fear? Absolutely. Mm. Um, I think. The Bible says, where there's no vision, people perish, mm. you know, and vision brings so much life. When, 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 you, know, when you know where you're going, mm. it brings a lot of life. It brings a sense of purpose. It brings a sense of surety. You know, you know what this is about. And mm. even on days when you're not feeling like waking up and going to see patients on that day, mm. that thing reminds you, well, this is what this is why we are in this. That why. Mm is the most important thing. And that's why it will pull you out of bed. Sometimes it will push you, sometimes it will pull you. But also there are days where you look at this vision and you're like, what am I really doing? <laughs> is, <laughs> to this about. You know, what's this about? Am I really onto something here? I'm just bluffing myself. Mm -hmm. And those are the days where really your emotions have to take the back seat. Mm -hmm. And you have, just have to remember what matters at that point. And that yeah. has to be the vision. You have to stay committed. And you have to remind yourself. I mean, the Bible says you have to write the vision down mm. and, and run put it. With it. Yes. <laughs> have where a you can see it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, have a cook too, too. Where you can see it. And every time you see it, you remember. Yeah. This is why I'm doing All this. Right. This is a bit of a cliche. We say mm. that your health is your biggest asset. But often we just we sort of forget what that really means. As a medical doctor, can you bring the idea home and give examples of why you say your health is your biggest asset? You know, there's so many different ways that I can um, actually talk about it. But, you know, they say in life, everything has a price. And for us as entrepreneurs, I think one of the things we usually pay um, the price for success with is our health. And the unfortunate thing is regardless of how much money you have, you can't buy a new heart. You can't buy a new pair of kidneys. Mm -hmm. um, if you're maybe in the first world countries, maybe you might be lucky and get a kidney donation or something it like won't that. Won't be like that. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sure. But it, you know what I mean. Mm. And I think we really have to be cognizant of that fact that if I am not well, whether emotionally, mentally, physically, chances of me giving my ultimate best in what I do is very, very little. And I think this is really where also, like I said, when I started this, uh, when this passion was ignited was when I started working. And I promise you, you start your shift at 7 a.m. and you leave the following day at 4 p.m. Mm. With no sleep in between. With If you get asleep, it's like you recline your car seat for like 30 minutes before the sisters call you for another patient or something like that. Mm. And I realized we do all of this at the expense of our health, at the expense of our well-being to try and achieve whatever it is that we have in mind, not realizing that this is the some of the, like a lot of the damage that we do is non-reversible. You know, you will wake up five years later with, I don't know how many, much, how much money in your account, but you have lost your, your heart, you've lost your kidneys, you've lost this and that. And I think this is the one area we have to be extremely intentional as entrepreneurs. Mm. I mean, we're the kind of people that live on caffeine because we need energy and it, like the meals are far in between. There's meal skipping and mm. all of that. And because you're working long hours and things like that, we don't have time for gym or we mm. don't make time for gym because mm. <laughs> yeah. you make time for things that you prioritize. You yeah. know, we don't make time for such things. And it's yeah. very important. I mean, sometimes I sit with patients and they're like, no, I have this very important trip to whatever, whatever, like a business thing. 
And I'm like, but you're not well. Mm. I'm, I'm saying to you, you need to rest. I'm mm. booking you off for mm. bed rest. And mm. I'm saying, leave your laptop at work and mm. don't take it home. Leave and, the cell phone as well. <laughs> <laughs> and leave your... <laughs> And the cell phones also. Mm. And it's a very important thing that we have to um, to realize. Fatigue yeah. is a real thing. I mean, I think recently WHO has actually um, put it in as a part of a diagnosis. That? Like work-related fatigue. Mm. You know, where you just burn out and mm. you are literally non-functional. Yeah. And this is related to occupational well, stresses and it's, pressures. It's interesting you, <clears throat> you describe it in such dramatic terms uh, before, but... How much worse is it now in the circumstance of COVID, where you watch television, South Africa, New York, wherever you watch, healthcare workers are overstretched. I wonder what's been your experience in Botswana, right on that point of where, yeah, right, right I mean, speaking to your point about neglecting, neglecting our health, is it not much worse under COVID? Well, I mean, COVID brought its own challenges. Mm. Um, I don't know if it's fortunate or unfortunate that I don't work in a hospital setting, um, but the pressure is almost the same for mm. healthcare workers everywhere. I mean, we probably are not experiencing like overwhelming numbers in hospitals compared to what other countries are experiencing, but the pressure is the same because mm. in as much as we're not there, we mm. are working around the clock to mm -hmm. say, should this happen, what do we do? Mm. Um, I mean, I know now of colleagues of mine that work at Sekipimile, mm. and they, there's very limited access to your family, there's very limited access to other people because you're working in this high-risk environment, they haven't seen their kids, they haven't seen their wives, their husbands, mm. and all of that. I mean, that on its own is a stressor. Mm. And if you bring now the physical demands of work, the mm. mental demands of work, the emotional demands of work, because I mean, as much as we are doctors, we're human beings, mm. we've got emotions, we feel, mm. we, we cry for our patients. Well, not in front of them, obviously. Mm. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I'd freak out if my doctor cried in front of me. <laughs> Yeah. But, you know, it's, 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 it's the same thing. Um, mm. it, I think the biggest thing that we really need to be aware of is the mental mm -hmm. um, stress and pressure that um, COVID has actually brought mm. um, to us. You mentioned the importance of eating and dieting and so on and so forth. In your practice, do you advise on that? And if so, for Botswana, what is the key? Botswana entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. what's the key consideration when we talk about diet mm -hmm. um we actually have a dietitian that works at the clinic and i i always say you know i think there's that saying that says we are what we eat and if you want to be healthy in life it's more 80 percent of what you eat and 20 percent um exercise or mm -hmm. fitness training mm -hmm. and to speak to the busy schedules we need to get to a point where we find practical solutions right for everyday life Mm -hmm. And I do understand that not everyone is able to cook at home and pack a meal to work. And I've seen recently with COVID and how it has, a, it has inspired a lot of us with business ideas and all of that. Mm -hmm. We've got people that actually do now your meal prep for the week. Mm -hmm. Then they'll deliver to you. All really? you have to do, yes, all you have to do is grab. I mean, I had to use that service myself because, mm -hmm. <laughs> because, uh, because I mean, at the time, I was studying for my final exams. I was working at the clinic and only also the um, other commitments of life. I think our entrepreneurs need to hear more about that. You give me the context yes, of yes, that yes. entrepreneur. Yes, yes, Definitely. Mm. Um, and this is now, so what we try and do is try to get the dietitian to advise our meal prep people to say, for someone who's got high blood pressure, this is what you ideally want to prepare for them. For someone who's diabetic or things like that, mm. this is how you would want to essentially have them eat. So together that so provides they will schedule a very your program nice over what the whole year to turn around maybe your condition. It's, it, it's, it's different. So usually we do like three months, three months, mm -hmm. um, because that's the time where you would be able to get um, measurable um, outputs. Okay. Yes. So it's nice in that way that, and also when they make you their meals, I mean, they do them differently. Some people would say they'll prepare for the whole week. Mm. Um, some people will do it daily. And um, I think that provides the convenience that we really want as entrepreneurs. Mm. Mm. You see, um, the other thing that we, 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 bring, we brought up in our chat is mm. 
the need to seek for help, the ability to ask others. Um, how do you handle that? And, and um, is there a tendency, especially among doctors, to say, I know it all, and to, and to believe that you are the expert in the room, you know? Yeah. Mm. Um, in the medical field, um, you might have heard of this word, second opinion. You know, you, you will always advise that you can go for a second opinion if you don't really mm. know, you know. And there's what we call getting a consult. If you don't, if you're sitting with a patient and you're not so sure about what's going on, you have a working diagnosis, but you're not like fully convinced. Then you'll call a colleague and say, I need a consult for one, two, three and four. Mm. And now bringing this to business, um, personally, I mean, throughout from primary school, junior high school, I, I've never really done like business studies mm -hmm. or accounting or any of that. Mm -hmm. I've just always been a purely science student mm -hmm. or computer science or all the three sciences and things like that. So when I now got into business, a lot of terms were so new to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would, I would have had them like just flying around, but not necessarily to understand the concept. Mm -hmm. So one of the first things I did when I was still employed, I, I, I took a six months course just to learn the basics of accounting, mm -hmm. which was a certificate. Yes. And um, fortunately, I've got a sister who is an accountant and I would ask her, question after another. Mm. So tell me about the statement of financial position mm. and the, what does it mean? What, mm. is, what are the assets? What are um, current li liabilities, liabilities mm. and all of those things? <laughs> because it was a foreign concept to me. Mm. But if you ask me about the four chambers of the heart and the iota, and <laughs> <laughs> and it's, yeah. it's an easy thing for me. And I think that's one of the things we need to be comfortable with um, mm. as um, entrepreneurs just as entrepreneurs i mean just that as an individual yeah be comfortable to ask questions when you don't understand um mm. i think some of the good teachers will always say to you there is no stupid question every question you ask is valuable it mm. will take you somewhere so i think for me and i mean i'm fortunate i'm so blessed to have my former employer that i can always go back to and say when you hit this stumbling block what, what did, did you, you do, do? Yeah. you know because i this is where i find myself today do you mm -hmm. have any tips to help me in that area or i want to do this and this and this what do you think is what's the best way that i can mm. go about it because you've been in the game longer than mm. myself so that is Why very do you important think that there's a there's a huge problem with professionals not being teachable because i, I you and i agree that it's <laughs> We have to be teachable, but there's a tendency, be. engineers, doctors, specialists, they, they are not ready to be teachable. What is, the, what, is, what is the reason for this and how do we overcome it? I don't, I don't really know what the problem could be, mm. but if I had to just like think from the top of my head, I would think it probably has to do with the degree mindset. Mm -hmm. You know, when you graduate and you're told, you are a degree, I mean, you're a doctor or mm. an engineer or you whatever. Have you, you have a, a master's, you've got a PhD. The assumption, even the way that we look at you is like, Ooh, you know a lot, mm. you know. Um, we don't expect you to not know anything. And if you ask me, it's like, ha, huh, mm. you don't know this thing, yeah. <laughs> you know, type of thing. But it's also just to be able to just break those walls, if I can call them mm. that, mm. and say, for as long as you're alive, mm. you will always be a student there's always something that you can learn. And I think that is also the one area where you can be able to spot opportunities. The one area where you can be able to take advantage of things that are presented to you. I don't know who said it, but they said, if someone gives you a job and you don't know how to do it, just say, I'll do it, and then go learn how to do it. Wow. You know, <laughs> and, correct, you know yeah. and I think that's really the attitude mm. that you want to have to always be hungry mm. for knowledge, be hungry to learn, be hungry to learn a new skill or something like that. We go to one of my personal favorites. Mm -hmm. Do not be afraid to fail. <laughs> Overcome the fear of failure. Run with it. I want you to talk about that, but tying it with your experiences. Mm -hmm. mm. Ah, don't be afraid of failure. I think when you read about, um, when you see the tip of the iceberg of success, it's so beautiful. It's like, it's, it's like so glamorous and everything. And really when y you don't consider the things that happen in the background, you almost always think oh, Mr. Mokobe just started and then it was like mm -hmm. on an upward trend from there, he's never had any struggles, like, you know. But 
as you get into the journey, you realize there are days where things won't always go as planned. There are deals that will fall through. There are investments that you will make and won't give you fruit. And, 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 and I think it takes us back to that um, place of knowing your why, knowing where you're going and how to get there. Mm. And it also comes with a level of self-awareness. Mm. Because I think every um, period of failure or every incident of failure in any area mm. teaches you something about yourself. Because you, I could sit there and suck my thumb and just let it go all together. Or I can, wear, I can get up and be like, okay, so what was that all about? What do I need to get from this thing? So that next time when I get something similar to this, I know exactly how to navigate it. So for me, <laughs> at PEMO, um, so we started November 2019, right? Mm -hmm. And when we started, uh, I remember we didn't really have a marketing budget. Mm -hmm. It was just like, okay, I'm a GP. I have worked for three years um, mm -hmm. somewhere, and I'm sure people now have an idea who's Dr. Precious, so mm -hmm. they will come if they need their prescription and things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, six months into it, not even six months into it, I think four months into it, COVID came. Mm. <laughs> we are, we're so new. Um, we're still trying to get traffic feet through the door. And now there's no movement. Mm. People can't leave their homes. People can't go anywhere. Mm. There's these three months where you're like, okay, I need... I need someone to need a prescription and to actually come here. Because rent still has to be paid. Rent still has to be paid. Mm. Stuff still has to be paid. Mm. Bills and all of those things. Mm. And fast forward post-COVID. Uh, well, we're still in the COVID era. But I mean post-lockdown. Yes. When now we were allowed to move around. Mm. I thought, no. We need a new game strategy. Mm -hmm. we ne I, need, I need Mr. Mokobi to think Pemo Clinic mm. when he has flu. Mm. But how do I do that? How do I get Mr. Mokobi to think Pemo Clinic if he has never heard of it, mm. if he's never seen it anywhere, if he's never heard anyone say anything about it? Mm. So now I need to find ways to get this name out mm. there in the streets. And what does that speak to? It speaks to marketing. Mm. So we started now in September and said, no, we need to intensify. We need to have a marketing strategy and a plan. Mm. And mind you, this is, remember, I'm a science person. Mm. <laughs> yes. yeah. So I had to learn that also, mm. that marketing is the core, is the mm. heart of the business. Mm. Marketing is what the business needs to actually make it. Mm. So we now have this marketing strategy and we run with it. And now people are starting to ask, what is this, Pimo? What do you guys do there? Mm. What is happening here? Mm. And I sat and I thought, if I knew this when I started, we could be far. You may not necessarily look at it as a failure, but it's definitely for me an area of learning mm -hmm. where I would say to any new entrepreneur that your business, the life of your business is dependent on your marketing. Um, I, I took over, over the lockdown period, mm -hmm. there was the, these online um, courses that were offered. And one of them was like a 101 into business and entrepreneurship. Mm. And one of the things that, so this, this course was to teach you how to do like an elevator pitch. Yeah, yeah. Right. And one of the things he said is when you sit down, before you get to that stage of having an elevator pitch, there's the work that you do. And in that work, you have to know how much your salaries are going to cost you, marketing. And I remember the one guy in class had brought, like his plan, he, his budget for marketing was like 5% of what he was asking for. Mm. And he's like, that business is going to collapse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so, you know immediately. Like, yes. I was doing pitching, actually. Uh, people are pitching as we're angel investors, me and a group of others. Mm. It's exactly the sort of thing that we experienced. People came. And then within five minutes, you realize that people have no clue. <laughs> they have enthusiasm, yes. but they don't have the right structure True. and awareness. And it goes back to my original question, overcoming that fear of failure and why it's important to go ahead and venture despite, despite the fear. And one of the things you, you, um, you say is that um, one of the books I read said, if you go to the market, with a fully finished product down to the T, you are you're too, too late. late. <laughs> the market will always tell you what you want, but that's no reason to give mediocrity to your clients. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I like that. I want you to <laughs> unpack it for me. Okay. So um, 
I think it was actually Mark who said, um, ideas never come fully formed. He said? Mark yeah. and the Facebook guy. Yeah. They says ideas never come fully formed, you know, and um, the other book, like I said, that I read was also saying that if you, if I get to a market, to the market with a fully finished product, mm -hmm. I'm too late. Because at that point, it means they would probably want something in a couple of months or something. Mm. And when you get an idea, you bring it to the market and they will tell you, this is how we want it. This is what we prefer mm. um, with what you are bringing. Then you go back and refine mm. it. Around. You fine tune yes. it to what the market needs. Mm. And when I say it's no reason also to give half-baked goods um, mediocrity to our clients mm. it's more an area where you're able to to learn exactly what your market needs mm. but you won't know what they need if you don't give them anything so i come now and i open a clinic and i'm like okay come people come take your bp then you realize actually you know what a lot of working parents here in the cbd are worried about cues and having to go and sit at um, government clinics to weigh their babies. Mm. So we need a baby wellness clinic here. Mm -hmm. We need a convenience where a working mom is able to just quickly come in for 10 minutes, weigh their baby, have someone take them mm. home, and then they come back to work. Mm. So in, 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 the, in the process, that is how your ideas get refined. Mm. And then now someone says, no, I'd rather weigh my child and get vaccinations at the same time. Mm. You know, so those are some of the things that, that's just a, a typical example of what that I can give. Mm. Um, in terms of ideas that don't come fully formed. So I have the idea of a general practice for consultation and um, offering health services. Mm. Then my client says, oh, don't you do an ultrasound scan? Mm -hmm. Then I think, hmm, okay, let's mm. see how many people actually need this. Of the patients that I see, how many of them need to yeah, be scanned? Mm. You know, so that, that's almost mm -hmm. how it works. Yeah. So you will never come knowing I call everything. it ready fire aim exactly yeah you yeah. ready you fire you aim late <laughs> <laughs> yes as it were mm. all right you see let's talk about honesty let's discuss this you see you, um, you have to be honest with yourself you have to be able to evaluate uh, but let me not misrepresent you mm -hmm. know your personality style know your strengths and weaknesses mm -hmm. commit to capitalizing on your strengths mm -hmm. you know i happen to agree with all of this mm -hmm. but uh, you know um, from I need you to speak more to that. Okay. Um, so you have to be, I think that's one of also my biggest takeaways in the last year or so mm. um, being in business is you have to be honest with yourself. You have to have difficult conversations with yourself. And sometimes those difficult conversations are not only with yourself, but people that are around you. Because mm -hmm. you remember, I think um, I was saying this to a friend the other day that, you know, as a leader, if you are not submitted to any form of authority, I am worried about your leadership because someone has to speak into your life. Someone mm. has to question the things that you do. Someone has to challenge mm. your thinking patterns. Mm. If in your space, you're the know-it-all, be-it-all, mm. there's a problem. And this is where also that, mm. where this feedback... The smartest guy in the room problem. Exactly. If you're yes. that, you're in trouble. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm. And this is where this comes in, that people that are around you that can be honest with you to say, uh-uh, you are not going in the right direction. You don't, you're not doing this properly. But also it brings a level of self-introspection that you have to do yourself, mm. a level of self-awareness that you have to do. I mean, it actually takes us back to what I was saying earlier about introversion and being shy and yes. all of that. Mm. Like I sat down, I'm like, like, I'm really not the kind of person to, <laughs> I know it all seems like I'm making all this up. No, you're not. No, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm enthralled. I'm following uh, what you're saying. Yeah. I had to sit down with myself like, okay, precious, we mm. do understand that social settings drain you mm -hmm. and you prefer your own space to recharge and all of this and all of that. Mm. But your business, first of all, deals with people on a mm. daily basis, mm. you know, and beyond that, I mean, I'm involved at church. I'm part of ministry and all of that. And it involves working with, with mm. people also. Mm. And I had to get to a point where I was like, okay, but... I need to be able to spot when I'm, I feel like I'm drained and mm. I need to recharge myself mm -hmm. and I need to find practical ways to do that quickly because time is not going to wait for me to have three mm. days of mm. recharge mm. when there is actually work to do. So yeah. it's, it's also that in knowing what are my strengths. Mm. I think um, one of the things that I really enjoy doing is teaching. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. And that is where Who um, do you teach. <laughs> 
And well, I at the moment it's more um like I said I'm involved at church, mm. so it's mainly discipleships that I do at church, just teach people about yeah. the love of God and um sharing salvation, also, yeah. sharing yeah. my 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 journey yeah. also, and then but if I bring it to work, I do health talks, mm -hmm. and the, so I'm passionate about health, and health I love talks teaching with your staff or even with your patients, even around town. Yeah, yeah, yes. So, um, so I'm passionate about health mm -hmm. and I love teaching. So for me, the two work so beautifully together that I can go to um, Mokobi Holdings and have a health talk with the mm -hmm. staff and we can talk about stress and how to manage stress in the workplace, how to oh. support it and things like I'll that. I'll keep that in mind. Yes. That in mind. <laughs> so All that's right. just one of the things, yes. Yeah. Enjoy the journey. Being an entrepreneur has to be one of the most exciting things you can ever do. It's by no means the easiest, but you have to enjoy every step of the way. You clearly enjoy your journey, but <laughs> how did you, what is your trick? Uh, I think there's so many things. You learn not to sweat the small things mm -hmm. and also just learning that life is not about events, like big monumental events, but it's actually the small, everyday mundane things that happen that actually culminate into that. Mm. So I think one of the mistakes we could do is think, when I'm a millionaire and I have the car that I love and, 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 and then you know what, I can enjoy this life. But every day there's always something mm. to look at as a highlight of the day and laugh about it and be happy about it. And I think for me, because um, like I said, I'm, I really love learning. Every day, there's always something that you learn about and like, oh, you know, someone didn't say something nice to me today. I could have responded this way, but I didn't. Mm. I'm definitely growing as an individual because if it was me 10 months ago, mm. I would have said this thing. Mm. <laughs> so, I would have exploded. You, yes. Mm. And so for me, I think that's the beauty of the journey. Also, I think the journey of entrepreneurship is also a journey of self-discovery, getting to learn what you're capable of doing the things that you can achieve, the things that you can do. I think for me, that's one of the beautiful things. Mm. Um, mm. All right. So so um, does it involve also having hobbies or having uh, things that are, you do on the side? Absolutely. Mm. You, you, you can't. I think they said um, all work and no play makes yeah. Jack a dull boy. Um, okay. So I enjoy golfing. It's one of my favorite things to do. I mean, if I've had a long day, all I have to do is go to the driving range for an oh, hour. That's and great. <laughs> and I come there, I'm a new person yeah. completely. Okay. Um, I used to enjoy running, but I think golf just overtook okay. that. Um, you, you have to have extracurricular activities. It just can't be about work because okay. that will drain you. Okay. One mm. other issue that has popped into my head that I need to run through you mm -hmm. is the issue of the vaccine. Mm -hmm the COVID vaccine, it comes to mind in the context where I live in COVID, uh, there are all this fear around this vaccine that maybe it's part of a bigger plot to enslave us. There are all sorts of things like chips and vaccines. Vaccines should be avoided. And we have others who are saying, no, no, by all means, everybody should go for these vaccines. Mm -hmm. have you, uh, what is your position on this? <laughs> uh, should we run to the hills when they come with the vaccines? Or should we go for them? It's a bit of a tricky one, mm. um, but scientifically speaking, mm. um, I think you, we want a product that has gone through the proper clinical trials and has been tested and been proven to be um, effective. Mm. And I mean, it has been very special with COVID because mm. usually clinical trials take longer, mm. you know, but we have seen now I think two or three companies have come out and say, yeah. we have a vaccine Pfizer now. And, yes. Uh, Modero or something you like know, that. Yes. They come now and say, no, we've got mm. something. We've tested it. It's effective. Um, they say 95%. Effective, yes. Mm. I think ultimately at the end of the day is to really hope that we have a credible mm. um, and trustworthy body of science that gives us the facts. Mm. Um, based on the work that has gone in um, on the ground. If I decode yeah. your answer, which is very diplomatic, <laughs> you are saying, let's wait for all the results to come in, and then you are still studying the situation and let us know. Yeah. Okay. I think we need sufficient um, mm. data to back up um, a conclusion like that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, don't downplay the years when you spend as an employee. There's a tendency to despise the part when you're an employee 
and then glorify the part when you are an entrepreneur. Let's deal with that. Help the listener understand what your point is about that. Yeah. Um, I cannot talk about my journey as an entrepreneur or as the founder of PEMO mm. without mentioning my six years of employment mm. and the value that it At, has brought. Marina, right? No, no. Yes, I, Marina, I was South Africa, South Africa yes. And where, then where was this? In Rustenburg. Okay. Yes. In a public hospital. Yes. And then when I came home, I was in private. I cannot really talk about what I'm doing now without referring to that. Mm. And for the most part, referring to the time that I worked in private in Botswana, seeing as I'm doing business here in Botswana. Um, there's a tendency to, for us, especially young people, we're very eager. We want to start and I want to be started on a six figure and seven figure salary and all of those things. Mm. And we miss learning the principles of actually being part of a successful organization that is running. Mm. And because our priorities are so skewed like that, we miss a lot of things. You know, it's easy for you to look at yourself as part of an organization and think, when I go to a client, mm. they charge, let's say, 10,000 an hour. Mm. If I went and did my own thing, that 10,000 could come to my pocket. So I'm making these people money and they're only paying me this little bit. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, that's usually the things you would hear. Yes. yes, the thinking. It's like, no, but I do so much for this company. I bring them so much money, mm. but they don't make, pay me enough. I mean, that's another topic. But for, for, for this, this one, yeah. yes, for the purpose of this point here is that you forget that for you to have been able to go to that client, mm. someone had to do a marketing Someone had to do business development. Someone had to network. Someone had yeah. to build a business relationship. Someone has to manage the books and the finances of the organization that you work for. Mm. You literally come in as a technical person to do this part of this journey. Mm. And that is where we tend to miss it a lot. Mm. But when, if we take a step back and realize, okay, where I am now, what extra thing can I learn in addition to me just doing my job? In addition to just me being a general practitioner that comes to work, mm. <laughs> to work at this um, clinic, mm. what other thing can I learn? Mm. Customer relations, business development, marketing, procurement, mm. all of these things. What does it take to run a mm. successful organization? One of the things that I always say is, before I got the job where I used to work, mm. I volunteered. Um, volunteer, I think, for a good month or so. Without getting paid. Without getting paid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's important. That's what I tell the yes. young ones to do. And mm -hmm. because I really wanted to work there, I really believed in what they were building and I wanted to be part of it. Mm -hmm. And when I came, I, I mean, I bothered that man for so long. I, I would always drop my CV every month. I'm like, just in case you lost it, let me give you another, <laughs> yeah. let me give you another copy, yeah. you know? Every time I came home um, for the holidays, I'm like, here's my CV, mm. here's my certificate, here's, I'm now registered with the health professions of Botswana, just in case you need someone to cover you for a weekend. And the one day, I'm sure he was just like, okay, this woman better stop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> only one way to stop him, to hire him. So the one day then he's like, okay, here's a job you can do, you can work oh, over yeah. it over the yeah. weekend. I took that um, paperwork, mm. I gave it my all. I, I made him aware that, you know, I don't really have proper office space, so I can come work here from the clinic. Mm. So I was there at 8 a.m. Mm. I would knock off when people knock off every single day mm. of the week. I'll be delivering there. a good product. delivering good results, good results. Mm. And at the end of that whole thing, fortunately, now there was an opening mm. at the end of that month that I was volunteering working there. And when I started working there, I didn't know half mm. of all these things that I was doing that I learned, but I learned on the job. I mm. learned as I was going. If there was a business meeting that maybe we, he had to go meet a client, he'd be like, no, you go. Mm. I'm like, but I don't know what to say to people. I don't know how to talk to business yeah. people. I'm a so doctor. Learn, yeah. <laughs> He's like, no, you handle it. Just go hear what they want, and then you'll come and give me feedback. Yeah, yeah. And I'll go to these meetings, and I realized, you know, Steve Jobs said that mm. the dots connect, you connect in hindsight. Backwards, yes. yeah. You know, and yeah. it, you look back now and see that business meeting that I sat in, that led to this that yeah. thing that i did that tender that i put together mm. 
it's all these skills that you learn. That patient who was complaining that I had to be the one to address mm. that thing, but together when you put all of these, you mm. realize that it was actually molding you to, for, to be yeah. the person that you want to be. And it takes us back to that. Mm. Attitude is everything. Yes. You have to be teachable. You have to be hungry. Mm. So those years as an employee in that organization mm. cannot just be by chance and yeah. you cannot just let them go down the drain. Dr. Serrero, yes. as we come to the conclusion, uh, you get a chance to ask me one question. Uh, what is it going to be? <laughs> you didn't prepare me for this part. <laughs> uh, well, I but, thought you watched the previous one. Yes, so. but um, I think for me, the, the one question I'll ask is, how does looking at your journey, what is the one thing that you would give to an entrepreneur as myself to say this is the one thing that you really need to hold on to as you walk this journey. Mm. Yeah. It's difficult to pin it to one because okay. it's a series of things, but one that pops to my head is really the importance of uh, learning, continuous learning. Mm. You know, call it personal development, call it uh, uh, being teachable, call it what you may. Mm. The preparedness to actually be hungry for, la for knowledge, mm. reading. You know, they say that readers are leaders. Yeah. So if you don't, uh, there's a difference between absorbing content online in terms of maybe uh, YouTube and so on, mm -hmm. and actually sitting down with a book. Uh, I don't know, scientists can explain it better. That there's, there's, a, there's a manner in which your brain receives knowledge mm -hmm. uh, when you are alone in a quiet place and reading and internalizing that knowledge. Mm -hmm. So for me, if I look at the biggest uh, jumps or thrusts or forward leaps, that we've had as a business. The biggest happened around the time when I internalized a particular book, mm -hmm. when I read a particular encouraging message from a given author. Mm -hmm. So the one thing is um, basically what you've covered, the importance of being teachable and the importance of continuous yeah. ongoing learning. Mm -hmm. So that when a crisis comes, and you know that a crisis is coming, mm -hmm. it's either you're out of a crisis, getting into a crisis, or uh, in the middle of one, you know? So you know that a crisis is coming. You're better prepared to deal with this inevitable crisis in your life mm -hmm. when you have learned and you've internalized information through learning and reading. Mm -hmm. That's what I can give to you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, this is the time you look at the camera. I think, which one is it? That I think one. it's that one. Okay. And then you leave that viewer you may just catch one viewer with one powerful motivational insights, a big takeaway for this session. Yeah. Um, I think for the viewers out there, if I had to really just share a message that I think you can take with is firstly, I didn't really mention it in my talk. You have to be anchored. You have to be grounded as an, as an individual. And for me, I, my biggest grounding and anchoring factor is God. You know, you need, that's where I tap my strength from. And then secondly, one of the quotes that I really like, and um, I actually printed it and put it in my office. It says, dreams don't work unless you do. And that's really the truth of the matter. It can stay a dream for as long as you want it to, or it can be a reality the moment you decide you're going to start putting in the work. And that is when the, rea um, the dream will actually work. So remember, the dream won't work unless you do. So the dream requires you to put in the work and you will definitely see um, the results come to pass. Okay. Yes. Let me then um, ask you to share with the viewer your contact details, please. Okay. So... Um, I'll, I'll look at the yes. camera again. So uh, like I said, I'm Dr. Precious. I am at Pemo Clinic, and it's a clinic that is based in the CBD in Khaburoni. Our contacts are 7765-3351. Um, we're also on social media platforms and Instagram and Facebook as Pemo Clinic. So you can give us a like um, on our page and follow us on Instagram so that we can get more of what we do because we're always just um, updating the services that we offer at the clinic. Thank you. Okay. Dr. Serrero, thank you very much. I don't know if I can call you Precious. Precious, yes. Okay, Precious. precious. You've been a wonderful guest. You've been uh, open. You've been generous with information. Please keep up the good work. May, may uh, wish you everything of the best you. in your clinic mm -hmm. 
and then your life. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mm. Actually, I should say I am extremely honored. Mm -hmm. um, and this was such a beautiful um, opportunity for me to be here. And I'm so, so grateful for the opportunity as well. And I cannot wait to see the higher heights that Mohobi is going to take. Um, thank you. Yes, thank you so much. thank you so much. Thank you so for much. For also just giving young entrepreneurs like myself um, a platform mm. and also just sharing and imparting your wisdom and knowledge. Thank you so much.